July is typically a month where we celebrate freedom, the freedom of our country. So it seems appropriate today that we celebrate being fully free, both inside and outside. So our topic today is free to be me. And your question this week is this, what's the one choice that you can make today to let go of any limitations that you might be feeling and embrace being fully free to be you. Let me say that one more time. What's the one choice you can make today to let go of any limitations you might be feeling so you can embrace being fully free to be you? There's an ancient fable that the gods got together when they decided to make human forms and give them divinity, and they got together to decide where to hide humans' divinity. So one of the gods came up with this idea of, well, let's just vision what might be the best way. We would call it visioning these days, but back then they called it consultations. So the first god said, why don't we hide it in the air? And another god said, humans are really creative. They're going to find a way to fly and then they'll find it. So another guy said, I've got an idea. Why don't we hide it at the bottom of the oceans? And one of the other guys said, you know, they're very imaginative. I bet you they're going to find a machine where they can explore the depths of the ocean. So one of the other wise gods said this, what if we put it in the ground? And of course, several of the gods said, they're certainly going to find it if we put it in the ground. They're going to find ways to bore into the earth. So they decided, well, maybe they needed to give this more thought. So they sat around envisioning and having a conversation about what would be the least likely place that humans might find it. And all of a sudden, one of the gods said, wow, why don't we hide it deep within the individuals themselves? And so that's what they decided to do because nobody could figure out how we were gonna find it because they said humans are always looking outside of themselves for what they need. So how could they possibly find it if we hide it deep within themselves? So they did that and then they left it to our devices for us to find it. So I know that in my life, and probably in your life as well, that we always have this urge, that we're always looking for something that we have not yet discovered. And that something we know is exactly what's gonna make us feel right and joyful and just bring us to that place of knowing our own divinity. So when we're looking for that divinity within us, it requires us to recognize that we are free, fully free to be whoever we are. The dictionary defines freedom as the power or right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. So I want you to think about that moment, that state of being free without hindrance or restraint because a lot of times I think we put self-restraints. We limit ourselves. Wayne Dyer in Staying on the Path said this, a special kind of freedom is available to us if we're willing to take the risk involved in getting it. The freedom to wander where you will about life's terrain, to make all your own choices. So what's the cost of your freedom? Are there places that you hide? Are there places that you aren't willing to take those risks? If we look at that fable about our divinity being hidden inside of us, Jesus discovered that divine thing within himself. He embraced his individual relationship with spirit. And the way it showed up on the planet was that he had these amazing powers. He performed miracles. And there was plenty of evidence that he had laid hold to this power that was hidden within him and that other people really didn't know anything about. Last week I talked about us being a temple of the living God. And this week I wanna talk about what Jesus said that's related to that ancient fable. He was having a conversation with a woman at the well in the town of Samaria. Now, first of all, men weren't supposed to have conversations with women back in those days, so it was absolutely a no-no. But the woman provided him some water, and then she said, Sir, 
I perceive that you're a prophet, and our fathers told us to worship at the mountain, but you've been saying to worship in Jerusalem because that is the place of holiness and the place where people ought to worship. And I, she was just curious as to what was the truth. Where should she worship? And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking people to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him worship in spirit and in truth. So if we were going to put that in today's language, John might have written in his gospel, it's neither in the mountains nor at Jerusalem, but within ourselves that we discover the real realm, that actual spark of life, that pattern of our own divinity. Now, those are not John's words, but I think that's what the essence of what he was trying to convey. Ernest Holmes, as part of writing about religious science and this philosophy that we had, said that the divine plan is one of freedom. Bondage is not God-ordained. Freedom is the birthright of every living soul. And I think we all instinctively feel that. We instinct instinctively know that here we are trying to express fully who we are. And in order to do that, we really have to listen to that inner voice. So how do you feel free to be yourself in every minute of every day? Do you feel like there's one person in one situation and another person in another situation? Or do you feel like you've discovered the essence of who you are and that's the person that always shows up? For me, I know it means that I have to let go of obstacles that show up in my path. And I have to believe that nothing can stand in the way of me speaking my truth and being my authentic, authentic self. So how do you think that you might actually embrace that spark of life, that pattern of your own divinity that the God hid within you? There's some common obstacles we all want to be liked, we want to be loved, we want to be admired at some level, we want to feel worthy, we want to feel accepted. But whatever you desire to obtain, you don't need approval from the outside. That's why the gods hid divinity in us. Because we're always looking for it on the outside. We're looking for our happiness, we're looking for our freedom, we're looking to feel the essence of who we are by looking to other people or other things. It keeps us from being our true self. Here's a few questions for you. How often do you go along with somebody else just to avoid conflict? Hello, I am absolutely one of those people that until uh, the last couple years, I wouldn't speak up. How often do you say yes when you really know you should be saying no? Hello, done that, been there. We have to get better at that. We have to get better at choosing how we want to live and being able to speak that truth out loud. We have to get better at choosing what we know is good for us and being in control of our lives, getting past those obst obstacles presenting ourselves on the planet as the real us instead of the fake version that says yes when we mean no or keeps our mouth shut when something might create a conflict. Have you ever considered that it's actually your obligation to share all of who you are? That when you were created, you were created authentically and uniquely as you and it's your obligation to show your true self without any limitations on this planet. There's a movie that I remember watching when I was young and it was called Imitation of Life. And it had this young girl that was constantly trying to present herself as something she wasn't. And she thought it would make her happy, but in the end, she wasn't really happy at all. So I'm wondering if there's a place in your life 
where you're faking it, where you pretend to be somebody you're not. So in today's meditation, I use this quote from Jonathan Living Seagull. Don't believe what you see with your eyes are telling you. All they show is limitation. Look with your understanding. Find out what you already know and you'll see the way to fly. I think that quote gets to the essence of how we show up here authentically as who we are. How often have you looked at circumstances of somebody else's life and immediately made a judgment about or formed some kind of an opinion about what their life was like or who they truly were based upon what your eyes saw? Stores and restaurants always are getting numerous complaints about what went wrong. They rarely get people that come up and say, oh, that was wonderful. Because we're very quick to get issues resolved that are, that are limiting our lives. Yet we don't take the time, and I don't think it's the norm these days, for us to write a little note of thanks to someone that we appreciate, to let them know that they did something that for us was a bit extraordinary or made us feel good for that day. If we continue with the quote and look at, look with your understanding, find out what you already know, I think that those are the most important lines of that quote. Because when we look with our understanding, when we recognize that those things that look like anger to us might just be calls for love, we're looking beyond the surface. We're not judging the book by its cover or by its gruff exterior. We're using all of our God-given qualities when we look with our understanding to try to find the truth. And that helps us find out what we already know. You've lived a life gathering oodles of data. We live in a data world, but your data is uniquely yours. You're the only one that has lived every minute of your life in the way that you've lived it. So you're the only one that's lived that exact set of data. And so sometimes when something scares us, and right now the virus seems to be scaring a lot of us, we feel fear. We want to go back to what was familiar. When they first started asking us to stay home, we all wanted to be able to go to the grocery store. Even though for me, going to the grocery store was really a task I didn't enjoy. But now that I couldn't do it, it made a whole big difference of, now I want it to do it. We want to be able to go to movies, to eat out with our friends, to visit our friends. Our lives changed, and part of what we considered our freedom was really gone. And for me, as I looked back, it was like a lot of people that I know were living such busy lives that every moment was planned or consumed with some task. And so when they had time, what happened is they had to really look at their lives. They had to look within themselves for that spark of the divine. When we come to look at things with a new understanding, we actually realize that we can take charge of our lives and do something about whatever is happening around us. You might have seen on YouTube or on the news that people were cleaning, cleaning their houses and they were baking bread and discovering new ways to use Zoom. People that had never been in technology, the older people, were learning how to use Skype and Zoom and other technology ways to stay connected. Because we had a choice to be isolated and stay in our prisons or to take action and do something that was gonna make us feel more connected and allow us to renew our connections, even if it was in a different way. Allow us to spend time with our family, even if we couldn't physically be them. Allow us to do something that maybe we've wanted to learn how to do. We each learn to fly in our own way. We each found that way, rather than staying stuck in the limitation of, you have to stay at home. So in the meditation, I ask you to reflect, where in your life might you feel forsaken, that uh, lack that sometimes comes in our lives? And whatever came up for you, what I'm telling you right now is, that's not the truth. Limitation is not the truth of us. Believing in lack in your life 
is looking at eyes that are telling you about that limitation. It's failing to look with your entire understanding. It's failing to find out what you already know. And what we know in this philosophy is God is the source of all good. It doesn't come from outside, which the gods knew we'd be looking outside for our divinity and for our happiness and for our love. It doesn't come from outside. Jesus figured it out. It comes from within. He knew the real realm, that spark of life, that pattern of his own divinity. So that brings us to our next point. So in Timothy 1.7, we read this. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Do you live your life wondering, being timid, being afraid of what others might think? I think we all have been guilty of that one at some point. We want to impress our parents. We want to impress our boss. We want to impress our friends. We want to impress our congregants. Here's the challenge with this philosophy. Do you really believe that we're all one? Because if you do, how can anything that makes you happy not be exactly what you're meant to be or meant to be doing? Because anything that's good for you is good for everybody. We're all one. You have the power to be yourself all that you can be and to harness that flow of the universe through you and do what it is you love. And as a matter of fact, I would think you have an obligation to do that. In our philosophy, one of the basic beliefs is that there's one life, one infinite reality, and that reality seeks self-expression through each of us. That expression is our life, it's the life of every human being. Every human being is a precious, unique expression of the infinity of that one universal spirit. So if one individual is not fully expressing exactly who they're meant to be, it means that God is not fully expressed. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the person that's going to allow God to not be fully expressed. Spiritual energy is always fully available. Always fully available. Have you ever felt exhausted and you know you think, oh, it's been such a long day, and then all of a sudden, one of your friends says, calls you and says, do you wanna to go to a movie? And it's a movie you've been wanting to see. And you think, yeah, that would be wonderful. And all of a sudden you have this surge of energy. It's because at that moment, you actually were fully expressing as who you were. There was a world traveler, he was very wealthy, and he went to Africa. And when he was in the jungle, he saw these beautiful multicolored parrots. And their language was wonderful and they spoke so precisely. So he had his guys capture one and he took it back to the stakes and he kept it in a cage. He treated it well. He gave him all kinds of wonderful things to eat and honey, and he bought very expensive bird seed. And they had conversations quite a bit. And a couple years later, he was making another trip to Africa. So he went to his bird and he said, you've been a companion to me. Is there something that you might like me to tell your friends in the forest? And the parrot said, yeah, tell him that I'm happy and well, and that I hope that they're the same. So the man went to the forest, and when he was telling his friends, the parrot that I captured and brought home with me is happy and well, and he wants you to be, this, to be happy and well as well. One of the parrots had a big tear well up in his eye, and then he killed over and died. And the man decided, boy, they must have been really, really good friends. But he dismissed it, and when he got home, he told the parrot, there was one parrot in the forest that when I told him that you were happy and well and he, that you wished them the same, he welled up in tears and he killed over and died. And at that very moment, his own companion parrot welled up with tears and he killed over, looked dead. So the man was placing him outside to bury him 
And when he got him outside and put the box down, the parrot took off and flew up into one of the highest trees. And the man was astonished and he said, you tricked me. Why would you do that? And the parrot responded that he learned a great lesson from his friend, that sometimes you have to die to fully live. So what has to die in you so that you can fully live? Is it lack of self-esteem? Do you have to let go of a belief that you're not good enough or pretty enough or thin enough or, or rich enough or smart enough? You get the idea. So what is it that you might need to let die so that you can soar to your highest heights and be fully free like the parrot? It's possible you don't have a friend from the forest to explain to you or give you an example of what it is that you might need to let die, but I bet you know what it is that limits you. In Creative Living, our founding father, Ernest Holmes said, back of all creativity is the pressure of our own divinity to come forth into the humanity that it has created in order to enjoy the fullness of its own expression the fullness of its own expression. Where are you not living freely and enjoying that fullness of your own expression? Spiritual energy has a tendency to want to be expressed. There's plenty enough to spare in the world. There's enough to share. And it's our attitude that can cause us to feel restriction. Our attitude or our belief in lack our belief that there's not enough money to go around or I have to work hard in order to make money. If we remember that God is our source, we can't be limited in any way because spirit does not stand the rigor of that lack. There is no lack in spirit. We are called both from within and without to a greater expression of life. There's nothing in spirit that ever says no to what it is that we desire. What we have to remember to do is say yes to that divine creative impulse within us. And we have to say that yes today and every day. And sometimes multiple times during the day because something comes up and we forget. Steve Jobs said we have to have the courage to follow our heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to know. Everything else is secondary. We have to have the courage to follow our heart and intuition. Begin by knowing that you are already where you truly want to be, that right where you are right now is where you divinely ordered to be. You are not limited by time, by space, or by anybody other than yourself. In our philosophy, some people say fake it till you make it. I'm not really fond of that because I don't want to be fake in any way. So what I say is see it in your mind's eye and then bring it into your heart. Because what you hold in your heart is the essence of what it is that you're desiring. It's not about having the how worked out. It's about seeing it in your mind's eye and holding whatever it is that is your dream in your heart. It's about having that ability to feel that dream, to feel it fully. Because no one else on this planet can do what you have come here to do. As I said earlier, you have lived a life that's uniquely yours and only you can be you. So as soon as we try to be somebody else, it's not gonna work. So believe that you're special. Believe that what makes you happy is important not only to you but to having the divine fully expressed on this planet don't copy be authentically yourself be free to be all that you can be free to be me be brave enough to have the courage to step into all that your life is meant to be and to as the song said earlier in the meditation listen to your heart's song so that you know how it feels to be free. So I wanna challenge you this week to remember to know you are free to be yourself, to be willing to let go of obstacles, to believe that nothing could stand in the way of who you are, 
and to authentically step into all that you can be. To look with your understanding and find out what you already know. It's time to stop believing in lack. You already know that God is your source. Remember that. Look at what you already know. And know that you exist to make yourself happy, not to impress anybody else on the planet. See that happiness in your mind's eye and bring it into your heart. And then listen to your heart's song. I want to repeat that quote that I started with from Wayne Dyer. A special kind of freedom is available to you if you're willing to take the risk involved in getting it. The freedom to wander where you will about life's terrain and to make all your choices. What makes you feel free? What risk might you be willing to take? I like to say that there is a power from which we are inseparable and I invite you to use it. Cultivate a spiritual practice of fostering your being all you can be. Make yourself available and allow time for you to choose you, whatever that means for you. Make that one choice today to let go of any limitations so that you might embrace being fully free to be you. So let's just pause and take a moment and pray. Hmm. Ernest Holmes said that we have the ability and talent and are busy using them. The talent is divinely sustained and it's market marketed under a universal plan of right action. So as we pause to pray, what I know is that there is nothing but divine action. There is nothing but God. There is that one life that's God, that is love and joy and especially freedom, that divinity that the gods hid right within us. Hmm. So I know that each of us this week is finding that place within us. We don't have to soar to the sky. We don't have to dip into the depths of the ocean and we don't have to bore into the ground. All we have to do is listen to that inner voice. Listen to our own heart song. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful to have this opportunity to talk about freedom full freedom, both within and without. <sighs> I'm grateful to know that the God without is the God within each of us. The God without is the God within each of us. And everything that God means to you, everything that that power, that source, that love, that unconditional acceptance means to you is right where you are. So from all that gratitude of that knowing, knowing with my own understanding, I just release this prayer into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth that the divine has already called it good, already said yes to it. So I can just say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is.